A Wi-Fi connection is now deemed more important than a car, a mobile phone, a TV, makeup, chocolate, cup of tea, and a living, breathing, waggly-tailed pets. So, if you want to get away from all of this, what do you do? Let's imagine a world where you're detoxing. Uh, well, let's talk to Martin Talks, who actually runs digital detox trips for those trying to get away from it all. Hello, Martin. Hello. Yeah. Take, take, take us away. What do we do? <laughs> well, um, I think it has been established by a discussion that, that uh, we all are over-obsessed with our, our phones and our screens. We check our mobile phones over 100 times a day. I think it works out at over four years during a lifetime. So, uh, yes, taking a break can be very healthy. Uh, it can be very good for one's mental health. It can be very good for lots of reasons. Reconnecting with the world around us, friends, family. Uh, so on digital detoxing, what we're trying to do is uh, take people away for adventures where we actually take away their phones and their screens of different types, uh, and we, we lock them away for the weekend, and we take them on lots of different experiences where they're not using that. So rather than taking an uh, a Instagram picture of the countryside, we get them to paint it, uh, you know, rather than... Um, uh, do do uh, I don't know build a farm on a on some sort of Farmville game? We actually get them to uh, do something with horticulture. So lots of different experiences that uh, reconnect people with, uh, as I say, the world around them and the people around them. Why is it so bad? Is it not just that this is progress? Uh, well, uh, there are lots of good things about technology. I should confess that I I use technology a lot myself, so I'm not advocating we go to an, a, a world without technology, but there is this necessary balance that we need to strike. And we're only at the beginning of this journey of understanding how what, the, what a healthy relationship with technology and particular screens is. Because yes, we've got Facebook now, we've got mobile phones now, but we're moving into an era of wearable technology where the technology is actually part of our clothing and wristbands. So uh, soon we're gonna have embeddable technology, so it's actually within us. So you know, you'll never need to recall a fact anymore. You'll just be able to call up Google in your head and uh, answer the question. So you're outsourcing your knowledge. So we're just at the beginning of this journey, uh, and we need to start to ask ourselves some good questions, some serious questions about um, what relationship do we think is healthy with technology. When people go on a detox trip, um, how, how many people are with them? Is, is it the kind of thing that you, you can do alone? Um, I guess you can do it alone and we tend to take groups of people because people benefit from connecting with other people face to face and I think that's one of the things that uh, screens particularly has taken away from us even in the family house you can all be in the same room but you can all be alone together you can all be uh, engaged in one's own ex personal experiences one own little bubble uh, even in a, even in a family environment so I think it's really important for people to sort of understand and remind themselves how rewarding it is uh, to go back to those human instinctual behaviours of wanting to be part of a group. Come on, Martin, tell us what it's like. I bet you there must be some people who go, give me the phone, give me my phone, I need my phone. <laughs> Actually, we did have one great case of that, which was uh, a year or so ago. It was during Ashes and someone was a cricket fan and was desperate to know the score. And, of course, was able to constantly update himself from his app on his phone, but without his phone, he had no idea what the score was and how the game was going. So he was literally, anyone we saw was going up to him trying to ask him what the score was, which was an interesting experience because he met lots of new people and had interesting discussions about cricket. But yeah, it's, uh, some people do uh, do find it very hard. Okay. I mean, there's that phenomenon of um, uh, phantom uh, a vibration of a phone in one's pocket. Even without the phone in the pocket, people were sort of imagining there was a vibration in their pocket. They thought they were receiving calls. This sort of thing is becoming so ingrained in us. Do you know, before we go on, the three of us in the studio here, I use mine too much. Mm. I get roused all the time because I'm always on the internet, always Twitter and all the rest of it. You too as well? You're the same? 100%. Oh, yeah. I am on my phone constantly. <laughs> like you were talking, I heard um, the guest who was on just a second to go talking about people who reach from their beds to get their phone. <laughs> Guilty. Zoe Diamond? <laughs> yeah, I, I am. But I tend to do it more when I'm on my own opposed to when I'm with people. Right. I think that's what I would do, maybe. So, so yeah, there, is, there is the phenomenon of, of fubbing now. I don't know if you've heard what? that word. Fubbing, fubbing. Yes, yes. Have you heard that? Yeah. You know, phone snubbing. So people who, you know, even when you're supposed to be having a conversation, will, will pick their phone up and, and check that in priority to uh, talking to someone opposite them. <laughs> so come on then, you're, you're the expert. You take people away. I presume they pay you for the privilege. Ironically, we got you through your website, which means you are yeah. online. Yeah. 
Um, what's the what's the big trick? Um, for anyone listening, what's the thing to do? Do we just leave the leave the phone down? What do we do? Go for a walk? Leave it behind? Uh, I think there are various things one to do, but I mean, obviously, going on on a weekend away can be a good kickstart. But what we need to do is find balance in our everyday lives. So, you know. I would definitely advocate not taking the phone to bed with one. I would uh, charge it downstairs, and uh, I, I would I would definitely advocate uh, when you're going outside for a walk. Yeah, leave your phone behind. Why not enjoy the enjoy the uh, world around us much more? So I think there are lots of things one can do just to create a balance. Because as I say, I think technology has brought lots of benefits, but there is also the downsides to it. So uh, just finding ways to balance it. And a lot of people are now talking about taking a sort of um, one day a week where they're literally not going to access technology just to take, make it almost like a sort of Sabbath day for the technology. So you just take a day off. And it's amazing how rewarding that can be. And certainly we get lots of great feedback from people on these weekends saying it was a real feeling of freedom or a giant two-day deep breath. You know, these sort of feedbacks which surprised them as much as anyone that they would feel that way. One last thing. Do people tell you they sleep better? when they're not using technology? That's a really good point, that, because I think that's one of the big factors that I think, you know, that we need to be careful about, particularly with children, because, you know, strongly backlit devices mess with our systems, That uh, the supra-schismatic nucleus, I believe it is, which um, is, uh, is is the thing that, 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 that uh, uh, it can in, inhibit, if you mess with that, it inhibits the release of melatonin, which is the hormone that it encourages sleep. So uh, if you're using screens just before you're trying to go to sleep, it's really hard to go to sleep because your body is just not producing that melatonin, which is the naturally occurring hormone that encourages sleep. So if your kids are using their phones or their tablets or whatever in bed, then they're not going to, well, they've got a TV at the bottom of bed. They're just not going to get to sleep in the same effective way. Martin, thank you very much. Dean Martin Talks, who runs Digital Detox. Somebody else has um, 